And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's 8 p.m. and this is a new edition of Panorama News. In the upcoming 45 minutes, we'll be bringing you the latest of the political, economic and sports news happening all around the world. I'm Henny Safe. I'll be bringing you the political news for tonight and we'll start off with the headlines leading the way. Egyptians vote for the second day in the parliamentary elections. Foreign Minister Shukri holds talks with South Korean senior officials. And Hollande Cameron kick off bid to rally global support against Daesh. Welcome back. The news in details. Polling stations opened for the second day on Monday in Cairo and 12 other governorates for the second stage of the parliamentary elections. Voting takes place between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Cairo local time. Monday is the second and final day of voting, with one-off rounds scheduled between November 30th and the 2nd of December. Voting abroad was concluded Sunday night. A number of 222 individual seats are contested by hundreds of candidates in the second round. For party lists, there is a total of 60 seats in two constituencies in Cairo and the Nile Delta. A total of 160,000 army personnel were deployed to secure polling stations in the 13 governorates in which the second stage of the parliamentary elections take place. The 13 governorates voting are Cairo, al Ubeya, Minufiya, Sharia, Garbiya, Kafr Sheikh, Damietta, Bursaid, Smaleya, Suez, North and South Sinai. Deputy Foreign Minister Ambassador Hamdi Loza said that more than 37,000 Egyptian expats voted in the second phase of the parliamentary elections. He said that the number represents a 22% increase in the turnout than the first phase. Egyptians voted on Saturday and Sunday in 139 embassies and consulates. The High Elections Committee is yet to announce results of the vote. In the same context, Egypt's ambassador to Jordan, Khaled Sarwat, said that the number of Egyptians voting in Amman and Aqaba in the second stage of the parliamentary elections reached 1,436 voters. Egypt's ambassador to Sudan, Osama Shaltout, said that 117 voters. In Germany, Ambassador Badr Abdel Ati said that the turnout of the voters in the second stage was as four times as the number of voters in the first stage. Our ambassador to France, Iher Bedoui, said that the number of voters in Paris and Marseille reached 1,140, while in London, Ambassador Nasser Kamil reported 493 voters. And finally, our ambassador to the U.S., Yasser Rida, said that 203 voters have taken part in the second stage of Egypt's parliamentary elections. And uh, joining us now uh, is uh, Nal TV's uh, reporter Rehem Mursi uh, from uh, Shobra District to update us on the latest uh, taking place for the second day of the parliamentary elections. Hello Rehem, can you hear us? Rehem, can you hear us? Well, oh, hello? Well, obviously, there are some technical difficulties. We're going to try and get back to Rehem later on. A number of domestic and international observers have been monitoring the voting process of the 2015 parliamentary elections in a number of polling stations in the governorate of Bursaid. The observers praised the organization of the security measures taken throughout the governorate and reported that there have been no violations in any of the polling stations that they have visited. Now TV's uh, Linda Abdel Latif conducted the following interview with an international observer from the Global Network for Rights and Development. 
We're right now in Estumi Gamil School in Port Said Governorate, where we've been witnessing how the voting process has been going in Port Said Governorate. Now, to update us more on the observing process of the 2015 parliamentary elections, I'm being joined right now by an international observer who is Numan Balazzi from the Global Network for Rights and Development. Sir, thank you so much for being with us today in Altavi International. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here with you. So let me introduce myself very quickly. I'm Mr. Baltasi from GNRD Geneva, representing GNRD Geneva here. Uh, first of all, we would like to thank you, the officials, the Egyptian officials, to give us this opportunity to come here and observe the election. Now let's sort of first about, uh, or let's speak about the voting process and how has it been going so far in the different polling stations that you've been visiting in Port Said government. Okay, thank you very much for this question, by the way. So we are here to observe the election, to observe the process. Uh, till now, we didn't see any mistakes. I mean, the, the team, including the judge, the member staff, were very professional. Uh, people who are coming voting, they, uh, they are very professional as well. They are well educated. Everything uh, is working very perfectly. What about the organization and the security measures that you've seen in the different polling stations that you've been visiting today and yesterday as well? Yes, this kind of question is part of my checklist. So uh, we, we take note of everything. The security is very good. The, the guards are very uh, well formed. When we show, for example, our badges, they recognize immediately that we are an international uh, observers through the colors or the names and things like that. So very well educated and uh, the, it's, the, the array is very well secured. What are the other points that are on your checklist as well? It's, we have two parts, outside polling centers and inside polling stations. So. Outside, we are checking the, the ambience, if people are, I don't know, if, if they are in a good mood, for example, if the security guard are present on the, on the field. And inside, we are checking if, for example, ballot boxes are transparency, if the judge is here, if the member, uh, staff members are here as well. So, uh, but we, we, there is no mistakes. Everything uh, is working very well, and we are very happy to, 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 to be part of this successful process. Thank you, Linda. And uh, now we are joined uh, w uh, through the SNG with Nal TV's reporter Rehem Morsi from the Shobra district. Hello, Rehem. Can you hear us? Yes. Good evening, Henny. Rehem, can you update us on the latest on what's taking place in Shobra district uh, where the polling station that you are situated at right now? Uh, well, I, um, I earlier asked about the approximate number of uh, voters that have turned up today and yesterday. When I uh, went to uh, ask at various polling stations, the approximate numbers are somewhere between uh, 20 to 30 percent of the votes have come in so far. But again, we're expecting uh, more people to come in as uh, there's a, the final hour of voting uh, continues. Today, we saw a bigger number of people coming in than there were yesterday. Uh, we saw a lot, of, a lot of elderly people coming in with disabilities as well. Um, earlier in the morning, there were more younger people coming in um, and later on in the day uh, at, at around 5 p.m. Cairo local time we started to see more people coming in as well after working hours and so forth. Um, the, there were some irregularities happening here as well in um, Shubra. I personally witnessed one of uh, the candidates uh, with his own uh, monitoring units talking to the voters, asking them who they voted for. So I went and complained to the army personnel who immediately removed them from the vicinity of the school because this is considered a violation of the voting process. Mm -hmm. Rehem, uh, do you expect still more people to show up? We understand that uh, the doors will close at 9 p.m. So there's a little bit less than an hour. Do you think more people will show up? Yeah, usually voters tend to turn up last minute uh, when it comes to the voting process. We're used to seeing this in other elections as well, where more people start to show up uh, towards the last half an hour or 15 minutes of voting uh, to cram their votes in because I suppose they're being told by other voters that uh, maybe uh, they need to go and encourage them to vote or maybe that uh, a certain candidate that they thought was going to win is not necessarily leading in the poll, so they go and are more encouraged to vote for them. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Rehem Morsi, Nal TV's reporter from Shobra District. Thank you very much, Rehem, and we'll definitely be joining you again for more updates after the doors close and the vote counts start. But now, let's go out for a short break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Mr. 
يا رئيس المجلس هو انا هجامل المحافظ على حساب ناسي مجلس الشعب ان يبحث عن حقه واحنا دوله مؤسسات ونحترم السلطه القضائيه والدفع للحكم المجلس اللي جاي ده في مرحلة دقيقة يعني احنا مستنينه من زمان راجل الشعب ليه ليه قراراته فعلا وليه اهميته انا اللي اخترت هم اهدافهم ايه وعايزين ايه وجايين ليه يعمل حاجات كويسة مشاريع كويسة الزراعة الصناعة البلد كلها مهتمية بيها البلد كلها مستنياها يعني ناس تعبانة او الناس مش عارفة تعمل ايه مش عارفة تقول ايه والله ايه مش عارف اقول لك ايه بصراحة and now we're joined uh, over the SNG with our correspondent uh, Nermin Abdurrahman to update us on the situation there. Hello Nermin, can you hear us? Good evening Hani, how are you? Good evening Nermin. Can... Uh, Hani, if I can hear you well, you were asking me about uh, the updates or uh, the situation in Mansoura. Since we've started 9 a.m. in the morning and uh, um, um, I think uh, whenever it comes to the time when we've started, only few of the committees started a little bit late, about uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, later than 9 a.m. in the morning. But uh, far from this, uh, the procedures of uh, the voting process went that smooth all over um, the government, right, except with some irregular and uh, some uh, health problems uh, which we covered in uh, the previous coverages. Um, uh, I'm going to, to um, say them once again in brief. Uh, we had only one death. It was in Mitram. It was in um, a school uh, in, uh, in Komenur, uh, a village affiliated to, me, to Mitram. And uh, it was... Um, um, a bomb which was diffused in Meet al Korama's village. Uh, this is another village uh, near to Mansoura without any casualties or damages. Rather than that, uh, the uh, uh, flow or the turnout is heavier than yesterday. Uh, according to the uh, statistics which uh, were released today in the morning from the main operation room in the headquarters of Al Taqahliya Governorate, we knew that uh, the uh, average or the percentage to be accurate of the voters here in Taqahliya reached 20.23%, and it's expected to uh, be more than 30% by the end of the day. There were rumors saying that uh, in some places the uh, time is going to be extended for the voters, but at least here in Mansoura and in the uh, school I'm in, where there are five subcommittees, um, uh, uh, all the, uh, the committees are going to end by 9 p.m. Cairo local time as scheduled before. To you, Hani. Yes, Nermeen, and the vote counting process is expected to start right after 9 p.m. as they close the polling station. Is that true? Yes, it's going to, uh, to end by 9 p.m., at least here. I mean, in some places where the, uh, uh, the voting started a little bit late, maybe an hour late, but this is not in the Qahliya. Uh, the, um, the, the HEC or the Higher Election Committee said that in some places, but it's not in the Qahliya, the time is going to be extended. And since we have mentioned the HEC, the High uh, Election Committee, uh, Omar Marwan, Councillor Omar Marwan, the official spokesperson of the committee, said that Al Qahliya, Al Manufiya, and Al Qalyubiya are uh, the highest. Uh, turnout enjoyed the highest turnout in the voting process among the 13 provinces where the uh, where the voting process of the second phase of the parliamentary elections took place for the two days today and yesterday Sunday and Monday thank you very much Nermin ladies and gentlemen that was uh, Nal TV's correspondent from Mansoura Nermin Abdurrahman and moving on, as part of a South Korean visit, Foreign Minister Semeh Shukri discussed on Monday with head of the Parliamentary Foreign Affairs Committee, Kyung Wan Na, ways of boosting bilateral relations, marking 20 years of diplomatic relations between the two countries. During the meeting, Shukri asserted Egypt's willingness to enhance economic and parliamentary relations between Egypt and South Korea. For her part, Wan hailed the Egyptian South Korean strong ties, adding that they are waiting for President. Abdel Fattah Hassisi's expected visit in the first quarter of the coming year. 
The foreign minister also met with the charged affairs of South Korean Agency of Interna for International Cooperation for Foreign Development, Kawika. The meeting focused on the agency's projects in Egypt, especially those related to electricity, information, technology and communication. Shukri expressed Egypt's desire to establish more development-related projects with South Korea. Establishing an Egyptian-Korean university for technology was also discussed during the meeting. The Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement that warplanes of the Russian Air Force struck 472 terrorist targets in the provinces of Aleppo, Damascus, Idlib, Latakia, Hama, Homs, Raqqa and Virsur. The Defense Ministry also said that it was hunting oil transporters in a bid to cut Daesh terrorist financing, adding that in the past five days, some 1,000 fuel trucks have been destroyed. We have the details. Moscow on Monday said its warplanes had hit 472 targets in Syria in the past two days, including tanker trucks and oil infrastructure in territory controlled by Daesh terrorist group. The Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement that in 141 combat sorties in the past two days, warplanes of the Russian Air Force struck terrorist targets in provinces of Aleppo, Damascus, Idlib, Latakia, Hama, Homs, Raqqa and Deir Zor. The military said that the latest strikes had destroyed 80 tanker trucks near the stronghold of Raqqa as well as a large oil storage tank. The Defense Ministry said that fuel reserves some 50 kilometers north of Deir Zor were also destroyed in the strikes. The Russian Defense Ministry said that it was hunting oil transporters in a bid to cut Daesh terrorists' financing and also claimed that in the past five days some thousand fuel trucks had been destroyed. The Russian military claimed that terrorists had suffered serious losses in Saraqib, a city in the northwestern province of Idlib and in the town of Qala'at al-Madiq in Hama province. Russia says its airstrikes target Daesh and other terrorists. The West has previously said that Russia is targeting moderate opposition factions fighting Syrian President Assad. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad said in an interview published on Sunday that government troops were advancing on nearly every front thanks to the Russian airstrikes, with Russian state media reporting the regime had taken control over two cities in the southeast of Homs province. French military sources said that warplanes took off Monday from France's Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier newly deployed to the eastern Mediterranean for operations over areas held by Daesh terrorist group in Iraq and Syria. Rafael jets loaded with bombs were catabulated from the carrier's flight deck Monday morning. The Charles de Gaulle has 26 fighters, more than doubling France's strike capacity in the U.S.-led mission against Daesh militants. France already has six Mirage and six Rafael jets stationed in the United Arab Emirates and Jordan. To avoid crossing paths with Russian planes, France is coordinating with Moscow via the U.S. coalition headquarters in Qatar. And live now over the phone, we are joined by Linda Abdel Latif, Nal TV's reporter from Bursaid. Hello, Linda, can you hear me? Good evening, Hani. Linda, can you update us on the latest developments taking place for the parliamentary elections process in Bursaid? Well, Henny, I'm right now in front of Astoum Gamil Primary School right here in Port Said Governorate where we have been witnessing how the voting process is going right here in the Governorate. Now, let me just tell you that from the early morning at around 9.30, a.m. when the actually polling station has opened it has opened 30 minutes later than it should be or around 23 minutes later than it should but uh, the numbers at that time were a little bit low but the numbers started increasing like at 10 a.m all the way up to the afternoon now let me also tell you that the numbers at that time were really good the schools that i'm in are all have a total of 7,119 registered women. So they're all women who were coming here to participate in Astoumi Gamil 
primary school. Now, let me also tell you that before uh, the opening or before the break that was assigned at 2.30 and ended at 3.30, the numbers started decreasing a little bit and like at 3.30, PM when the resumption of the work has resumed again or when the work has resumed again right here in Ashtum and Gamiz school the number at that time was a little bit low but it increased towards the evening and the late evening like right now the numbers are really good the women are coming to participate and be part of this very important day now a couple of minutes ago I've managed to speak to the subcommittee chairs right here in Ashtumi Gamil primary school and they told me that the total percentage right here at this school has reached 12 percent so far yesterday and today combined now let me just uh, give you some percentages on the participation right here in Port Said governorate as a whole now right here in Port Said governorate we're having a total of 470,208 registered voters. Now, yesterday, in the three constituencies that we have in Port Said Governorate, the total number of participants were 47,968 in the three constituencies combined, and the total percentage in the three constituencies right here in Port Said was 12%. We're still waiting till the closing of the polling stations right here in Port Said Governorate in order to know the final results and the final percentages of today's participation. Linda, uh, is it expected that the doors would close at 9 p.m. or maybe 9.30 since the doors actually opened half an hour later in the morning? Well, the subcommittee chairs have told me that the polling stations will, yes, close at 9 p.m. if no one is available or if no one is standing outside the schools. If we're having people standing in queues or waiting to participate, then they will accept them. But if there's no anyone who is waiting in order to come and cast his votes, so they will close at 9 p.m. exactly. And then the vote counting will start right off. Thank you very much, Linda. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Nal TV's reporter, Linda Abdel Latif, from the Port Said Governorate. And now we're off to a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs> والله احنا كنا محتاجين قانون المرور ده من زمان على الاقل حتى يسيبونا نزودها ربع جنيه الا لو عملوا قانون يمنع استيراد الكاوتش انا مش فاهمه ليه ما يقسموهاش يوم للعربيات الفردي ويوم للعربيات الزوج سنه سته دي لازم تتلف المهم اننا نستغل طاقه الشباب بقى لو مسكون اتحاد الكوره لكنا وصلنا كاس العالم من زمان طبعا صوتك مهم لكن علشان يكون مفيد مكانه الحقيقي في السنه Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're joined by Nal TV's reporter Basma Taha from Isaida Zainab. Hello, Basma, can you hear me? Basma, can you hear me? Hello. Basma, can you hear us? Hello? Well, it seems that she can't hear us right now. Maybe we'll try a little bit later to uh, be joined by Basma Taha. Moving on, the United States and its allies conducted additional strikes against Daesh militants over the weekend, including two in Syria that destroyed nearly 300 ter terrorist vehicles and an oil facility. The two were in addition to nine strikes in Syria on Saturday, reported earlier by the U.S.-led task force. A coalition statement said that on Sunday, the coalition conducted 19 strikes against Daesh militants near 11 Iraqi cities and 14 near five Syrian cities. According to the coalition, four of the strikes near Hasaka, Syria, hit three terrorist units and four structures, while four other strikes near Ain Aysa hit four other units, among them targets. The statement added that in Iraq, five strikes near Ramadi destroyed two other units and improvised explosive device, fighting positions and other targets, while three strikes near Fallujah struck another tactical unit.
And now we are again joined by Nal TV's reporter Basmata from Aseda Zainab. Hello, Basma, can you hear us? Basma, can you hear me? Good evening. Hey, can you hear me? Basma, uh, can you update us on the latest in uh, what's taking place in the voting process in Aseda Zainab? Candidates are competing for only one uh, seat. And in the last two hours, uh, uh, the number of voters increased. As you know, today, the second and the last day of the 2015 uh, parliamentary elections. Uh, half an hour and the, vo and, the, and the voting station will close its doors and the vote, uh, the counting of votes uh, will start. And so far here, everything is well organized and everything is going smoothly. Indeed, the security forces are exerting their most efforts in order to secure the voting stations as you can see behind me heavy deployment from the security forces are there in order to protect the voting stations as well as uh, the uh, surrounding uh, areas Henny? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was uh, Basma Taha from uh, Sayed Zain and Nal TV's reporter. Thank you very much Basma. Moving on, Israeli occupation forces continued on Monday their brutal campaign activating their killing machine against Palestinians, killing every citizen who, uh, killing every citizen who got in the way. French security forces have made nearly 300 arrests in the Paris region since the attacks of November 13th. Police chief Michel Cadot said on Monday that a total of 298 people have been placed in administrative detention, as well as 71 people under house arrest. He added that there were 10,200 police and 6,400 soldiers deployed across the region, that includes the capital, prioritizing stations, airports, large public spaces, government buildings, cultural sites, media companies and hospitals. Cador said that the threat level remains raised. He added that under the heightened security alert, school children will not be allowed to take part in the UN Climate Conference, which starts next week just outside Paris. And French President François Hollande received strong backing from British Prime Minister David Cameron on Monday as global efforts to crush Daesh terrorists gathered speed in the wake of the Paris attacks. Speaking before he also meets the US, Russian and German leaders in the coming days, Hollande said Britain and France had a joint obligation to strike at the militants group. Britain on Monday offered France the use of an air base in Cyprus for its strikes on Daesh terrorists in Syria, as French President Hollande prepared to ask other world leaders for helping fight Daesh. On a visit to Paris on Monday, the British Prime Minister David Cameron also offered air-to-air -air refueling services, saying he was convinced Britain would carry out military airstrikes alongside France and would be recommending Britain's parliament vote through such measures. France stepped up its bombings in Syria since November the 13th attacks in Paris claimed by Daesh. The group is also being targeted from the air by a U.S.-led coalition and Russia. Hollande said that France planned to intensify its airstrikes on Daesh targets in Syria with its sole aircraft carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, getting into the position on Monday for the strikes. The Cyprus air base could offer a further alternative strike base for the French fighters, which until Monday have used bases in Jordan and the Emirates. On Tuesday, Hollande is due to visit Washington, where he hopes to push President Obama to get already further into the Syrian conflict. Speaking before, before Hollande's trip, where he will be followed by a visit to Russia later in the week, French officials made no secret of their desire to see the United States doing more. In between the two trips, Hollande is due to receive German Chancellor Merkel on Wednesday and Italy's President Matteo Renzi Thursday morning. 
Still reeling from the worst terrorist attacks in French history, Paris will host nearly 140 world leaders gathering next week to spearhead a climate pact tasked with keeping Earth livable for humanity. After six years of preparatory negotiations, the 195 nations gathering under the UN flag remain sharply divided on a raft of intertwined issues. The UN said on Monday that weather-related disasters have grown more frequent over the last 20 years, claiming more than 600,000 lives, issuing a further call for nations to strike a landmark deal on climate change. The report from the United Nations Agency for Disaster Risk Reduction said that weather-related disasters such as floods and heat waves have occurred almost daily in the past decade, almost twice as often as two decades ago, with Asia being the hardest-hit region. The UN Assistant Secretary-General for Climate Change, Janus Pastor, said that preparations and some activities are affected by the terrorist attacks in Paris, including a huge march on November 29th by supporters of an agreement to reduce carbon emissions that has been cancelled by the French government. However, Pastor added that many leaders still plan to attend. China's top climate change negotiator said in an interview that keeping state leaders away from the negotiations will play a major role in ensuring that crucial talks on a new global climate deal in Paris next week proceed smoothly. Representatives from nearly 200 countries will gather in the French capital to begin talks aimed at thrashing out a new global deal to cut climate warming greenhouse gases. More than 160 countries have already submitted their own national pledges, known as INDCs, to the United Nations ahead of the Paris talks. These are all the political news we have for now. Now it's time for all the business and economic updates with Sally Lamlum. Sally.